Cromlick has all the bits for your tabletop wars. Spiking bits. Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we are checking out some more offerings from Cromlick. We have been showcasing Cromlick stuff for three or four years now here on the channel, and they just sent us a batch of what was previously their new releases. But between shipping and us getting it in and actually recording the stuff, there's a little bit of time passed. So it's their last last batch of new releases. They got a ton of great stuff for their new tabletop scenic slime, which we're gonna kind of talk about today, but not really show you. They've got a lot of statue bits, orc bits, uh, new dragonborns, uh, marine legionary bits, but we're not gonna show you those today either. <laughs> We have a lot of stuff to show you, but it's not all going to be today. I'm trying to break up the videos into small, manageable chunks for you guys. But they have a lot of great content over the site. Not only do they just retail products and bits on their Bits of War site, but they also have a lot of other stuff and a lot of other um, kind of a sale and loyalty programs that you might want to be aware of, free shipping opportunities and different things on their site too that I was noticing. So I was like, man, they got a lot of really robust offerings. And if you don't mind kind of waiting for the shipping from them over from Europe or finding their stuff from a retailer here in America, well, they got some really good offerings that go really well uh, for games like Warhammer 40k. They've got some Age of Sigmar stuff, of course, that can be used for those game systems. Or if you're looking to fill up a game table with terrain, well, they got you covered there too. But we're going to show you more of the accessories today for that. So just like I said, bitsofwar.com is their retail side, their official store for Cromlech and Tabletop Scenics. This is where you're gonna find all of the resin bits and things and kits from Cromlech. You're gonna find the MDF and HDS terrain for Tabletop Scenics. Now, if you want to find out news about those two separate arms of Bits of War, Cromlech, whatever you wanna call it, then you can click on these individual links here. Uh, this one will take you to Tabletop Scenics. And then the other one for Cromlick will take you into Cromlick and you can find out more about all that. Those, of course, are right here and right here. Now, something else to be aware of uh, is their loyalty program, which I noticed on here. And we hadn't really touched on it before, I don't believe. Basically, what it boils down to is I think for every 499 euros you spend, you accumulate a quarter 0.25 euros uh, towards checkout. So, for instance, that you can use later. So for instance, if you spend like 20 bucks, then you get, or $25, let's do, well, yeah, sure, $20. So if you spend $20, then you get what? A dollar in Euro, give or take. So back, so for every $20 you get, I mean, it's a little bit of reward, it's not a whole lot, but it, you know, keep you coming back and maybe, you know, save you, get, get you a free blister here and there but it's a lot more than some other companies give, right? And then of course they have the veterans program, which according to this, uh, whenever your purchases on the Bits of War store exceed 500 euro, you'll be promoted to veteran and there's additional discounts and things that they don't even talk about on here. So super, super secret. Now I will let you know too, that if you go over back to uh, the site here and you add something to the cart, like I've already added something to the cart, we're gonna add, we're gonna check out this field cannon, which we have today to show you for the orcs or grots. They also show you that, hey, you can get free shipping and I'll tell you how much more you need for free shipping. Uh, it must exceed the minimum of 150 euros in free shipping. So theoretically, if you get free shipping about four point or 3.5 times, you'll become a veteran. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're kind of going through and maybe seeing some stuff. They do have a lot of holiday sales, but I'm not sure that, you know, they'll take off the, the principal here. So it might not add up. So you'll still have to spend a little bit more, but you'll save more, but you'll get more. You kind of know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's just kind of cool stuff just to be aware of on their site. Now, uh, whoops, hit the wrong thing there. So going back to their main site, you can see all of their uh, different categories and things. Like I said, we're a little behind the times on these new releases. These aren't the current new releases from them. This is the, like the last batch, but you can check out everything that they have to offer in here from, you know, their orcs to their guard to their legionaries. Uh, they have pretty much something for a lot of different tabletop factions and different games, plus all the terrain and all the uh, upgrade accessories for terrain that's out there. So let's jump into what we actually have to show you today put it together, give you some ideas on how you can use it on the tabletop and the sizes compared to some of the other games out there like 40K and perhaps Age of Sigma. 
So I have a bit of a confession to make. We don't really need to look at the blisters because they're pretty much how they're gonna go together. So it's just about sizing at that point. So we'll show you those here once we get them together. Here's the field cannon though. And this one's really interesting. It is, you know, really, really good quality uh, resin here. And it seems to be injected very well. They've got their, their sprue gates and everything figured out. And there you can see the mold lines that we're gonna have to shave down here. But uh, very cool looking. And it's got lots of detail from the rivets to the corrugated panels to, you know, the front little I-beams that are shaved down and pointed. And then you got some scrap metals and different things on here. And that looks like it locks in the front right there. And here's the cannon itself again. But, you know, done up pretty well. And you can see all of the extra details on there. Just be careful when you're snipping these out. You don't want to uh, bust off your axles right there. That would be bad. And then on the, uh, the wheels themselves, they're really cool little treaded kind of pattern with some studs and the spokes coming out and then the, the grok crew members these guys are going to look hilarious painted up so you've got this dude all sighting it in and everything with all his uh little contraption right there and then a loader grot sculpted in you know tr traditional crazy looking big big nose and sweat back ears and stuff i don't know that's just a worky way there and then here's the gun gun yep there's the breach so there's the breach there's the handle uh, some sort of stabilizer sighting rod and then I guess that's how it works that seems what is this, this has got to be some sort of lava or something because there's no real clear barrel right there I guess it recoil I don't know how this works but anyways there's a bunch of different big guns here and I think I actually put a different one together already so we're gonna look at that here in a second there's here's the uh, adjustment with the little uh, valve to raise or lower I guess that goes up here I don't know. I'm so confused now. We've got to get this together and see how it looks. Well, now you know the little secret here. <laughs> Sometimes we prep stuff ahead of times, and I didn't realize that they sent us a couple of different cannons here. So we put this one together already <laughs> and didn't realize that that wasn't what the other one was. So this is the variety. There's three different varieties. I just looked it up on the site there. And you can kind of see, well, it it's very similar. You know, the front, uh, whoops, didn't glue that down, so they're a little bit interchangeable. The front piece is a little bit different the whole carriage back here is completely different from that last one i showed you so while they uh i think the only thing completely the same is the wheels here but the proportions are all pretty good and it's got you know your traditional kind of uh v or y y axle kind of spoke thing right there to support everything but definitely looks like it's taking a shrapnel around right there and then of course the gun itself i'm not exactly sure what kind of gun this would be with a big um flash suppressor on the end of it but it is what it is that's only crazy if it doesn't work when it comes to the grots so there's a loader with some ear protection and a big um ramrod thing there and little cider orc right there telling them when it's ready to fire you could paint a big eyeball on the very end of that like he's looking out <laughs> very very cool uh kit as far as that goes now how big is it compared to an orc well we got a plastic g-dub 40k orc right here so it gives you kind of an idea now this guy's on a 25 mil uh but it definitely gives you an idea of exactly roughly how big it is compared uh, to some of the stuff out there and then if you want to compare him to like a primaris well hey he's about that big too so it looks to be on scale if you're, you know, you're trying to pick this up and use it for 40k or something like that. But if you have other plans for it, well, hey, now you uh, should definitely kind of have an idea. But just in case, it's about three inches by two and a quarter-ish right there. So next up, we have some of their terrain bundles or terrain accessories. These are uh, Space Marine crates or what do they call them? Marine crates? Supply legionary supply crates there. Let's get it right. So you've got first aid ammo grenades or rockets ammo grenades So it's a little bit out of a video game, I suppose and they're kind of cool You know, you just gotta shave the bottom off and they're pretty well detailed got some really cool clasps and all the handles and everything that you would expect and as far as sizing goes well, they do uh, size up pretty good, you know, you figure if there's rockets in here well, it would probably be about that big and ammos and stuff maybe about that big give or take something that a marine could probably carry of course we're using a primaris right here grenades things like that so these would go pretty cool just kind of you know stashed about or on a diorama or something like that just some neat little accessories right there to kind of make whatever you're working on pop a little bit more uh to life and then i guess maybe to go with their mdf hdf line of terrain which we'll show you in a separate video 
uh, they've they have these statue series, and here you have a legionnaire statue statue with a tabard, some sort of sword, and interchangeable heads. Remember, there was a, a whole bunch of different heads right there, and they all look good. We popped that one off just because it was the hooded one, and it seemed most uh, appropriate to go with this right here. But you know, uh, as far as sizing goes, slightly bigger than a Primaris, but not quite Primark size. So. Uh, these would look good on a lot of things, to be quite honest, like terrain, uh, vehicles next to things. But they're you know pretty three dimensional, so you can kind of stash them. You could put them on a base, just have, kind of have them hanging out in the middle of the table or something like that. So a little bit more um, larger than life kind of uh, tribute to a particular hero out there. And then there was another one too, is the angel, angel of death or grim reaper. What was this thing called? I can't read the packaging because it's all destroyed. Grim Reaper statue. There we go. Now, I like I like all the styling and everything on it. Like you've got uh, the featherings looking good. The little skull face in there looks great. All the detail that they have is great. But I'm not exactly sure what's supposed to happen with this. Uh, if there's supposed to be a hole in there for the Reaper scythe, because that's just going to be very difficult to make work right there. And I wasn't even going to try it. Like you'd have to drill that out. Hope that you don't. Man, it's just a lot of work. So. I'm thinking I just got a bad fill on this and there's supposed to be a hole and it looks like there's a little nub right there that it goes into and of course you know this will look good on a lot of terrain and stuff once you get that in there and they have like some larger angel ones on their site too that look to be you know they don't have these intricate pieces and stuff hanging out of them so I like the piece I think it's a cool idea you know and it's lar that larger than life scale that we just showed you but I just can't get the the reaper scythe on the end of it right there so i don't know i don't know what happened it was really hard to tell from the website so i think it just something something happened we didn't get a fill so you could spend some hobby time and fix that i'm not saying it's unfixable it's definitely fixable i just don't want to spend another you know 30 minutes to 45 minutes drilling it out and fixing it and maybe patching up anything that i mess up so uh no big deal there but i just wanted to mention it all you know all the same and then you've got this two pack uh, sprue of shrooms that came with it. Yeah, it's another identical sprue of shrooms right there. Didn't really do anything with it because you basically just cut it out and put it on anything. And with you know the gloom spire of gets coming out, it might be cool to have a bunch of random mushrooms laying around. And you got a bunch of different sizes, so we'll just use Mr. Orcman here uh, as an example. So you they can get pretty big, or they can be you know relatively like you know ankle slash well more knee knee high right there, knee high shrooms. But uh, I don't even think. And they might be about an inch. Yeah, that one's definitely an inch, quarter of an inch, three, three fourths of an inch right there. So they can get kind of big and you get a bunch in here, two, four, six, eight, ten. So 20 different shrooms. I think they're a 599 euro. So not too bad a value if you really, if you think about it, just to kind of spruce up some bases or maybe some terrain pieces and such. So overall, Cromless got some really good offerings for terrain and then also, you know, some orc stuff out there. Legionnaires, we didn't really show you a whole lot of that, but there is more out there that we're going to show you probably in another video. So whatever you're looking for, whatever faction out there, whether it's, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, 40k, Age of Sigmar, whatever you want to call it, make sure you check out Cromlech. They have lots of deals, lots of free shipping. They really take care of you and, you know, it's only a week and a half away give or take or you can maybe find the stuff here in the states so we've been reviewing their stuff for years i love i love 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 their stuff i think they're very they're always coming out with something new just if you if it's not out yet just wait an extra week make sure you check them out uh over at cromlick.com bitsofwar.com they also are, excuse me cromlick.eu bits of war and also i guess now the tabletop scenix website as well so thank you very much for watching this unboxing build of the most recent crom like we have <laughs> make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos